So, John, uh, thank you for giving up your time today. Uh, if for the purposes of the people watching at home, if you'd like to uh, introduce yourself and, uh, and your line of work. Okay, so my name is John McGee. I'm also known as uh, Mr Consequence and I work up and down the country helping young people understand the consequences of risk-taking behaviour. So how did you get into this kind of work? It's quite bizarre actually. Um, it was about just over two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. Um, I had a battering company with a footballer called David Dunn. And it's fair to say I've got a bit of a, a shady past. And I bumped into a lady, a lady called Amanda Meachin from Community and Business Partners. And um, started to get one another and told her a little bit about my past. And she asked me to come and do a talk in the community. So I did a talk for inspiring communities. And um, to my surprise, there was a lot of people there that said, you know, I had a very powerful story to, to share. And I should, you know, think about doing it a lot more because it can help a lot of young kids out. And that's when the journey started, really. And uh, we come up with the name Mr. Consequence to talk about consequences and everything. Drink, drugs, gangs, all my life experiences, basically. And so, and since that point, what kind of things, what kind of work have you been doing? How, how, how much work is it? Oh, involve? it's just, it's, it's took over my life. It's, uh, for me, it's not like work. It's just living the dream. So um, from that came an opportunity where I sat down with David, talked about setting up our own charity locally. And then that moved from having a charity to setting up uh, what we've got now is called Streets, where what we did is we brought my life experiences as being a, should we say, a former gang member and being on the wrong side of the law most of my teenage years. And then David's life experiences coming from um, a premiership footballer and heavily into sport. And then we designed a multi-sports mentoring programme. So you, you mentioned dreams. Uh, in, in terms of your dreams for Streets, what kind of dreams do you have? It's just uh, helping uh, as many children as possible, really. Kids who are primarily from, you know, socially deprived backgrounds, a bit like myself, you know, growing up on a council estate, and just um, helping our program act as a pathway uh, into apprenticeships, uh, college, or even looking at setting up their own business, opposed to getting into like, you know, drugs, gangs, jail, and so on and so forth. So. That's what we're doing. And uh, uh, what are the biggest issues, uh, what are the biggest obstacles in the way of you achieving these dreams? Um, the main big uh, obstacle is definitely the, um, the financial climate. As, as we all know, it's uh, had an impact on every part of the sector. And only last year, you know, was commissioned by the community safety team to roll out a programme, an intervention programme for primary schools. We designed the programme, ready to go, and then unfortunately, the cutbacks came. We still delivered the program, however there was no money to, to be paid, but we're not really you know, in it for the money, we're in it for the kids. So we've delivered the program now and I'm glad to say since last October to now, coming into uh, July, uh, we've completed the program and it's been, it's been an amazing experience working with these, these kids from these junior schools from throughout the world. Um, what, what is it about streets that that is capable of, of achieving these dreams? What I think it's the old concept, is you've got this bit of this, you know, bad boy turned good. So, you know, that works really well when you're talking about gangs and drugs and some of the challenges you face with growing up on, a, you know, on this type of estate where I grew up. And then obviously having the Premiership footballer, the David Dunn. I um, mean, David are very passionate about helping young people, you know, get on the right path and achieving the dreams. So, yeah, it's... It's very powerful stuff. So, would, would you say that streets is um, really only suitable for people sort of in trouble? Uh, or? No, not at all. It's the, the whole programme's universal. This is what happened the first two years, is that we got pigeonholed into working with uh, kids, shall we say, with you know challenging behaviour. What we've noticed over the last year or so is we've just currently designed another programme called Invest in the Best, which is under the streets, and that's to help um, the more top end, if you will, so help them get A's and A stars. So the programme in itself is, is quite universal. And how, how's that been going so far? Oh, that's, we've just had some amazing feedback from Darwin Vale School. The uh, change in the 12 girls we took on the programme has been phenomenal and um, I'm quite confident to say next year when they leave school each one of them girls will finish with an A star. So, um, so it's not um, male dominated in, in terms of the, the sport? No, not what? at all. Um, the whole aim of streets is obviously sports to radically educate everyone to succeed so what we do which is unique to what we do is we allowed the, the children that have been signposted to the program we ask them what sport they'd like to do and that's what engages because if we were to turn around and say right you're doing rugby and half of the group said we don't like rugby less chance of engaging 
So we do our research first and find out what they enjoy doing, and then we use the multi-sports as a, as a vehicle to engage with a mentoring program. Um, could I ask you a question uh, about your use of the internet? Um, does your organisation use any online resources? Yeah, it's um, Twitter and Facebook has been massive for us. We've taught the young people that all come through the programme uh, the importance of social media and the negative side and what we've helped them understand is basic networking skills. So we set up the groups if they're over the age of 14 and we teach them how to encourage one another when they're doing their exams, you know, what time they're putting into the study and how they've all got different learning patterns of behaviour and how to encourage one another. So that's been, it's been absolutely really powerful. So do you use um, the internet um, for, to say, advertise or promote your work? Not well? all no? work. It's, um, you know, God will it may continue. It's been word of mouth. The phone never stops ringing. We're very, very fortunate. And the programme just keeps going from strength to strength. If, if, you, if somebody was to offer you um, some kind of online resource, um, what kind of features would be most useful for your organisation? Well, one of the main things uh, would definitely be the, the global web. This September, it's took two years to write the education pack, which is uh, AQA accredited. And what we're looking, our vision is to have it national, the programme. However, uh, having those lesson plans globally, so if, you know, I don't know, China, America, Australia could have access to downloading these lesson plans to help young kids in other countries, that would be mind-blowing. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, final question, um, what does the word punk mean to you? The word punk, growing up on this estate for me, was um, um, a group of lads sniffing glue um, who didn't conform to the system, did everything against the system, who just wanted to rock and roll, get wrecked and have a good time.